In this video, we're going to complete example one. Question A says that a company's shares have a market value of $13.65. We'll underline the important parts as we go. Terry decides to purchase 400 of these shares and his broker charges a fee of $44, including GST, to help with the transaction. How much money does Terry need to purchase the shares? So if he's buying 400 of them at $13.65, we just multiply them together. 400 times $13.65, and we get $5,460, okay, which he's gonna pay for the shares. He also has to pay his uh, broker, so we need to add this amount to the $44 that he pays the broker, which will take us to $5,504, okay? So let's now move on to question B. It says, a year later, the company makes a profit of $256,000. Let's underline that. They decide to invest half of this money back into the company and to share the rest amongst the shareholders. There are a total of 50,000 shares. And Terry owns 400 of these. What total dividend will Terry receive from the company? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we've got $256,000. Only half of this is going to the shareholders. So let's divide that by two. 256,000 divide two gives us $128,000. That's getting shared amongst the shareholders. Now, we are told that there are 50,000 shares, so we've got to split 128,000 into 50,000 parts, or 50,000 shares, and we're going to do that by dividing it. What are we going to get here? 128,000 divide 50,000 equals, and we get 2.56 or $2.56 per share. Now, Terry owns 400 of these shares, so we're going to go 400 times $2.56, 400 times $2.56, and we get $1,024. So Terry will receive a dividend of $1,024. Anyway, that concludes example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.